necessarily the most dominant successes. But when you have some of these other players in there, Commander Killer, Skeleton, where he's not, he is the one that is dominating those matchups against these more aggressive players. You damn Skippy. You really have to put, shout out that kind of level of careful play. I also want to shout out his YouTube channel where he's posted content. Uh, even talking Thank about you. some of the stuff that we've talked about here. Thank you very much. I'm a big fan of the dialogue, uh, so keep it up. Everyone, if you can get the chance to go check it out. Um, oh. Got to see those cigars. Be before we move on, something that, that I should do, what would what, what think we should do, um, because we don't actually have anything on screen. I know we've talked about. Okay, so I want to actually discuss this part, uh, specifically because they brought up Skeleton, and I've brought up Skeleton before. So when we started this season, Skeleton and I were supposed to kind of platoon at mid on CB rookies. Um, obviously, Skeleton found a team that would give him exclusive playtime, which makes sense. The whole reason for that platoon is because of the dramatic difference in our play styles. Where, um, and at the time, Swagboy wasn't our jungler. But where I am literally calling, this is where are we going? What are we doing? Hey, I forced the back. Can I roam bot? Hey, can we get some wards in here? Hey, you know, oh, are you invading? Hey, they're over here. You know, and, and it's not just me. I don't want to make it sound like I'm, you know, fucking high or some shit. High, the player, not even though that's legal in the state of Illinois. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but, you know, it's, you know, everybody on the team is calling it out. But the point is you want to always be in position. And, and so these are the, I'm going to tell you some of the lessons I have learned from players that are significantly better than me. If you are in a position to safely trade, take the trade. If you are in a position to deny CS, that's a free lead. If you see their jungler and can waste their jungler's time, do that shit every time. If they have to trade three ults for you, it's almost always going to be worth it. As long as they don't get a, a tower or an objective that's unanswered afterwards. As long as you're available to answer that within the time frame of those cooldowns. These are literally the, the, the cornerstones of the way I play mid lane. Yes, I do get solo kills occasionally. Yes, I do play to chunk out my opponents. But I'm not going to all in when there's no need to all in when I can either deny... 17 CS is the same as a kill when if I take a whole camp from your jungler, he's half a camp down behind swag. So and, and so this is kind of part of the thing. Every time you get to the mid game, the mid game, and it looks like we're even or we're behind, but swag is up a level. That's a coordinated team effort, right? Every time we get to the mid lane mid game and our bot lane is up or our bot lane is even, even though they gave up a kill or our top lane is, you know, miles ahead because, you know, he's just been solo killing. That's because somebody is having to take pressure and redirect it. And that's honestly, this is what part of why I really like playing with this team. Is because everybody understands that. Everybody understands it from you know top to bot lane to support jungle mid lane. Where hey, I have so and so on my ass. What can you do? Or hey, this is going on. Let's go get something and answer. Hey, he's there. Can you hold him? We had a fight the other day where we were just uh, we we actually kind of lost the fight. We picked a four v five, but um, I think the Orn was split pushing or some. Um, and we, and, and we were literally like, Hey, Hey, I know we're just stop the backs. Just keep them there. Just keep them there. We're going to take two, take an, an uh, take two inhibitors or something like that, because there's a significant amount of game knowledge beyond mechanical knowledge. I am aware that I am never going to be a one V one King. I'm fucking 35 years old, homie. I can barely one V one myself. Ha 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 ha. But really, yeah. So like. Why am I picking these fights with little fucking 19 year olds on Adderall and, you know, Kyled up on Monster Energy drinks? That's stupid. Just outthink them. That's how I wind up. You go, wait, that old chubby guy managed to make out with my girlfriend. How? And it's like, yeah, I just outthought you, you know, also because I have a bank account. But, you know, the point is. A lot of these players are good. A lot of it is putting the pieces together of what you have, the talent you have, and what you can play and what you can do with it to maximize your ability to move forward 
where at the same time, you, what you want to do is make sure is not that you necessarily need to raise your ceiling. There's a lot of players here who play at max level like a plat. It's that you have to raise your floor. Your floor is what's keeping you in bronze. It's what's keeping you in silver. It's what's not letting you climb. It's once you manage to consistently be like, regardless of how bad I do, regardless of how terrible I ent, I offer this much help to my team. I offer this much utility. Then you'll understand that like that way, like I said, even if you get smashed in lane, I mean, you pick Lux because even if you get smashed in lane, you can bind somebody. You can buy, you got a bind that comes up every three, four seconds at max cooldown. You're good. You're helpful. You're useful. The same reason, you know, you pick Anivia. You have a giant wall. You can just be like, fuck this area. You walk the long way around. You know, that kind of shit. That's the kind of shit. That's the kind of thinking that I think honestly will get a lot of these players to literally just eat, just fucking eat me. Like, there's a lot of them that could eat me, but uh, there's a lot of people who have gone two and three deep trying to get a kill on me. And way to go. You got a kill on me. I'm jibber jabbering. No shit. You got a kill on me. But again, in the meantime, my top laner gets us a 1v1 year top laner because we picked him into an advantageous matchup. And so that time you spent on me got my guy ahead. Not to mention now your jungler's here. Swag got a camp and my bot lane was able to push up and get a free better back. These are, you know, you have to kind of think a little bit more ahead in competitive games. And, um, and again, I know that Silver Scraps doesn't get to watch every game. It doesn't get to do all of that. But I feel like this is a really important thing that maybe we need a, a second line analysis. And I know everybody's coaches also have other shit and most of them play in other leagues. But these, we need that second uh, second line analysis of it's not just that. It's the, the, it's the crowd control. It's the did you consistently put out damage to, to, to make people low, even if you weren't getting ki kills, even if you weren't getting assists like it's those sorts of things that maybe aren't as quantifiable as yo he went 15 2 and 1 or yo he went 8 1 and 9 on trist like you got to figure out how to make sure that you are always available for your team um and also you uh, will cover we'll cover uh lane watching later uh maybe episode f whatever um but yeah these are, I think that's kind of why I simultaneously play different, but I think I play better. It's because they're playing, they're playing a mini game and I'm trying to play a maxi game where it's like, yeah, if you kill me, that's straight, but eh, is it? I don't know. So anyway, think on that. This has been the mind lane. Laters.